All right. Hello, everyone. How are you all doing today? I myself am doing well. Kind of sleepy, actually, because uh, what I did last night, uh, I found out that Gone with the Wind was going to be taken off of HBO X, Max, and so I wouldn't be too ignorant on the subject when I spoke about it. I spent four hours before bed watching the entire movie uh, all in one sitting. So uh, I stayed up until about 3 a.m. trying to get through it. And I'm glad to say that, uh, that I came away with some new perspectives uh, on what media can be and what media does for people because there's this idea where in film you're only allowed to portray the victor or of that war so what what am i saying is uh, the Civil War was brutal, and it was ugly, and it was a dark period in American history. But rarely do we ever get a depiction from the side of the Southerners, the Union, and such. And I'm glad to say that it wasn't a perfect um, presentation of the South or anything. The main character is flawed, and people think that uh, slavery is glorified in this movie. But listen, 15% of slaves who were freed returned to their original plantations because they just didn't know what else to do. In the movie, only three of uh, the main protagonist slaves stick by her throughout her life. That is fair representation in my book. Because the so-called uh, house house N words were stuck, uh, in, were treated a lot more fairly, uh, and believed in their white masters a lot more. So, so it isn't a glorification; it's a more realistic depiction, I would say, because it doesn't actually focus on this part of history. So, it isn't, sorry, yes, so it doesn't focus on any slavery issues. This uh, movie is still about this southern girl, so it's not uh, really meant to tackle those issues, and I'm glad it didn't because uh, you do get to see a different perspective, like I said before, and... I don't get why there's this illegal nature, this wrong think nature that you can't portray the opposite side of a battle. So, once again, I'm glad I watched it. It is the only portrayal from the southern aspect, from a southern perspective that I've seen. And I don't mean to come off as if I'm endorsing slavery or anything of that nature. I just understand that there were people on the other side who lost a lot, who, who had their husbands and fathers go to war and die for what they believed in. So it's not really as black as white and white as people want it to be. And I'm glad I watched this movie because, again, you, it's so, so rare to get the, the another side of history. Uh, moving on, though, I have some notes here. Uh, Scarlet, uh, the main protagonist, is quite the character for sh sure, but she is shown to be despicable throughout the entire movie. She starts out as a privileged brat, gets everything taken away from her, and she becomes a manipulative cheat, a harsh businesswoman. She's married three times, and in the second marriage, she steals the business from under her husband. And when he dies, he, she gets almost immediately married to her third husband. 
So it's not like she's this picture perfect person. And so you don't have to worry that this film is portraying these people as right. She is clearly in the wrong, but at the same time, she's clearly still a person just going through life who didn't understand all of the implications around her. And there was no reason for her to do that. The um, one more thing that I'd like to mention that civil, the rioters who are trying to be revolutionaries, who are in some ways trying to secede, as they have done in Seattle, they try to say, claim that this land it, that they have uh, taken over is no longer American. They don't understand the ramifications of revolutions. They have no idea what it takes, the blood that has to be lost, and they don't realize that they will be looked upon as the villains in history if they indeed fail at their endeavors which the South did, which we do now. So the biggest reason we view the South as the villain in this uh, series and the reason why we'll see these protesters as the villains is because you don't bet against America. You are going to lose and you are going to uh, go down in the history books as the wrong side. Uh, so, going past that, though, my favorite line from the movie was Fiddly D, and of course that very ending line that I will mention at the end of this video. And really, Gone with the Wind still portrays that there are no heroes in war. Not really. Um, so, uh, with that, I'll go real quick through this article and uh, then I can end the video. I uh, hope you guys been keeping up with me so far. I hope I haven't misspoken or anything made this video difficult to follow. Uh, Alright, so HBO removes Gone with the Wind to address its racial depictions. Warner Media has yanked Gone with the Wind from its HBO Max streaming service, but the company plans to return the Southern Civil War drama to its catalog once it adds disclaimers about the film's racial depictions. Yes, the absolutely horrifying depiction that three slaves didn't want to leave their comfortable lives behind and go and be part of a shanty town or be poor and sick and cold out on the street. Those racial depictions. Well, there's only one time where a black woman is hit in the movie by the protagonist, and that's only because the, the slave lied about being able to birth a child. And there's this woman going through labor, and there's no one around to help. So... I can understand the frustration from the protagonist side. So, you know, you have a woman here going through who's weak and who might not even survive the birth of their child, and you have this uh, person who lied that they when they said that they couldn't help with this type of thing. Very, very famous picture right here from the beginning of the movie but it in no way encapsulate what the movie is about. The movie comes less than two days after filmmaker John Ridley argued in Los Angeles Times opinion piece that 1939 film not only ignored the horrors of slavery, but also perpetuated some of the most painful stereotypes of people of color. But it's still a part of history. This is actually a part of history, and you can't cut it out just because it makes you feel uncomfortable. You should watch it because it makes you feel uncomfortable. It's okay to be uncomfortable. Not everything has to be uh, flowers and rainbows. Some of the stuff in this world is going to be ugly. There's no reason to ignore it. Warner Media, which is owned by Telemachus, 
telecommunications giant AT&T acted swiftly. Gone with the Wind is a product of its time and depicts some of the ethic, ethnic and racial prejudice, prejudices that have unfortunately been commonplace in American society. Warner Media said in a statement Tuesday, these racial depictments, depictions were wrong then and are wrong today, and we felt that it to keep the title up without an explanation and denouncement of these depictions would be irresponsible. Fine, fair statement. But people are allowed to view their choose the content that they view. If they're choosing to watch this movie, they clearly already have an understanding of what's going to be in it. They don't need to be have their hand held 24/7. They just want to watch a good movie because it is a good movie. It, as long as you're okay with that slower style that uh, 1939 movies had, it's just absolutely asinine that we have to have uh, people mo modi callo. Uh, I can't say the word. Have to treat people with such ignorance. That we. Like, everybody around me is going to be offended if I say something wrong and I should keep my mouth shut because I don't want to offend anybody. No. No. Why? Warner Media said it, it planned to return the Oscar-winning film to its new streaming service along with a discussion of its historical context and denouncement of those very depictions. Which you don't need. Most people who are going to go out of their way to watch it are doing it for an appreciation of filmmaking. Mo the norm normal crowd is not going to watch it. The people who are going to get offended by it are rarely going to come across it. And if you do choose to watch it and you do get offended, that's on you. You don't have to keep watching the movie. Anyways, there's no need for... A discussion of historical context. However, the company said that the film will be presented as it was originally created because otherwise it would be the same as claiming these prejudices never existed. The move comes in the wake of George Floyd's killing on May 25th by a white Minneapolis police officer who knelt on Floyd's neck for eight minutes and uh, as other police officers dispassionately looked on. The killing captured on cell phone video galvanized the Black Lives Matter movement and sparked huge protests in American cities against police brutality. One thing they always forget to mention in these articles as well is that these so-called countrywide uh, protests are only done at a maximum, let's highball this, 20 cities out of 310. Do you realize that that's barely 7% of the country that's going out and 7% of the country that's destroying their own cities? Media outlets have unevenly covered the protests and civil unrest have been reckoning with their own history of reinforcing racism. On Sunday, the New York Times opinion editor James Bennett resigned amid controversy over the paper's publication of an op-ed by Senator Tom Cotton under the headline, Send in the Troops. Cotton's piece focused on the rioting and called for the military to be mobilized to back up police. It came as the vast majority of protests were peaceful, which they are not. People are dying out there. More black lives have been lost in these peaceful protests than the, uh, than the amount of c people killed either black or white by police officers. Y yesterday, we had uh, 24 hours. 18 black lives were lost. And they still want to continue on with this lie that these protests are peaceful. And then firing people, letting people go for their opinions. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but this is bad. People are allowed to have a different opinion. 
separately on Tuesday, Viacom's Paramount Network canceled the long-running TV show Cops. As a filmmaker, I get the movies that movies are often snapshots of moments in history Ridley wrote in his opinion piece about Gone with the Wind. They reflect not only the attitudes and opinions of those involved in their creation, but also those of the prevailing culture. As such, even the most well-intentioned films can fall short in how they represent marginalized communities. See, this makes me realize that none of these people have actually watched the movie. They probably just read a summary or something of that nature, because once again, this movie doesn't glorify race, uh, slavery in any way. It simply shows that some of them were happy to continue with what they were doing because they weren't mistreated. Not all slave owners... Oh my god, that sounds so weird. But uh, let's continue. Not all slave owners were bad to their slaves. We do know that uh, prior to uh, the Civil War, that some slave owners were freeing their slaves on occasion. Uh, the MGM film swept the Academy Awards the following year, notching wins for Best Picture director Victor Fleming, actress Vivian Leigh, who is stunning in this movie. She's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. Uh, I would recommend the movie just for her, but to add on top of that, the supporting actress, Addie McDaniel, absolutely does an amazing job as Mammy, and no wonder she won an Oscar for her, for her portrayal. Gone with the Wind, however, has its own unique problem. Ridley wrote, it doesn't just fall short with uh, regarding with regard to representation. Why would it? This movie is nearly a hundred years old. Why would it, it come up to today's standard of representation, especially when it's a, a movie about a southern girl? It is a film that glorifies the antebellum South. It shows it as it was. These people are shown as simple, that they are ready to get into the fights and want to secede, but it does not glorify it. I don't think you know what that word means if you think that Gone with the Wind was a real glorification. It is a film that, when it's not ignoring the horrors of slavery, pauses only to perpetuate some of the most painful stereotypes of people of color. <laughs> If we are to create a more just, equitable, and inclusive future, we must first acknowledge and understand our history, Warner Media wrote in the statement, but did not specify when the film will return to HBO Max, if it ever does, because people are ready to erase history when they want so badly to be right. And anybody who watches this movie will know these people are wrong. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching or listening, what have you. If you have any thoughts, go ahead and leave them in the comment section down below. I would love to hear if you personally think that this movie is a glorification of the South and if it's a glorification of slavery. I personally don't believe so, but then again, I I watched it all in one sitting at uh, around bedtime. Around my bedtime, so uh, so that's all I have to say about that. But uh, thank you guys once again. If you have uh, left a like, I greatly appreciate it. And if you have subscribed, I mostly appreciate that as well. Until next time, I'll see you. I hope you guys take care. But frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn.